hello. Welcome back to another episode of Unruly Fashion. I am your Unruly host, Noella Eze. Um, today's episode, we're just going to dive right in. Um, today's episode, I'm going to continue on what we were talking about the last episode. But uh, before we go there, I think it's time to address the rebel in the room. So, um, a couple of reels ago, and if you've been watching the Inner Monologue series, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't been watching it, really, what's wrong with you? Um, we'll get into some of the action. So, um, in the series, I've introduced you to a few of like my inner voices. I've introduced you to um, piece of face. Gertrude, <laughs> everyone's favorite troublemaker. Uh, Gertrude, I've introduced you to Obi Ajulu, Obi for short, who is like the person who comes in, restores balance. And then randomly, a couple of reels ago, I introduced you to Eris, and I didn't say anything about it. I just, just kept going as if nothing happened. <laughs> and I think it's time we talked about it. I think it's time that we talked about it. So, uh, I mean, Eris is, I don't know how to explain her. Uh, <laughs> and that was the introductory. I don't know. She is chaos personified, but she is what philosophy majors would call the id. So it's the unfiltered version of me, and she generally shows up when it's just time to get things done. Don't think too much about it, um, and just you know, go with it. Go with it. Uh, Gertrude, by in comparison, shows up when I'm overthinking things. So she's my inner critic. She's the voice that shows up and just overthinks things, nitpicks, 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 and then I end up not doing the thing that I'm supposed to be doing because I'm just crippled with this a million fears, like the notebook of notes she's made because like, um, you know, there were so many mistakes. Yeah, but I'm crippled by that notebook of notes she's handed to me and I can't get anything done. It's just that's, that's what Gertrude is and obviously she's the one who shows up the most, right? And then Obi has to come in and course correct, takes the notebook from Gertrude and goes, leave her the hell alone, you know? No, 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 no. And then somewhere in between when Obi is just getting a little too nitpicky as well herself, Eris has to tag in and be like, you've been thinking too much, okay? That is, you're thinking too much about this. Let's just get this done. And that's what that character is. Now, over time, she will evolve. I know she's very... <laughs> One of the comments I got was, why so pyro? <laughs> it's like, like her character has a lighter in hand because she's ready to burn everything down. At a moment's notice, she doesn't think about it. It's just like, we don't like it, set it on fire, throw it away. We don't like it, set it on fire, throw it away. We don't like it, no. Let's say, okay, we like it, let's do it. Let's not think too much about it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. She's my forward motion. She's my get out of your head and get it done motion. And I'm very grateful when that character shows up because it means, A, I have hit rock bottom. <laughs> and it's like, you need to get out of this funk. She shows up when I need to get out of the funk. And B, it means great things are coming because that means all the ideas, just get ready to be thrown a whirlwind of ideas that you're just like, uh, okay, we didn't know this wasn't here. And I'm going to need you to roll with it. I'm going to need you to roll with the punches. Whatever Ares throws at you, take it. Deal with it. You can comment on it, or you cannot comment on it. The point is, it's gotta keep happening. So that's what that character is. Now, if you noticed, if you paid any attention, that character is also dressed in all black, like Gertrude, but she's more punk. Like there's a lot of safety things going on. The spikes, the you know, like you know, uh, chunky boots, platform boots, very edgy, very you know, fringe and all that. It doesn't mean like that. That's my favorite character because she, well, just when you think you can pigeonhole her, she's like, no, we're going to do something else. So I don't know what she's going to throw at me next episode. I don't know what she's going to throw at you the next reel that I bring, but I mean, <laughs> get ready. That's all I'm going to say. And now that I've cleared that up, so this, so I'm going to just segue into what I am this episode. That's going to lead us to what I am today. So what I am today is a color coordinated rebel. Now, like I mentioned, when Eris shows up, it means the my id, my subconscious is out to play and it's, I'm not thinking about it too much. And at the very core of me, I am a punk. And a punk, if anybody knows, is just someone who just eschews conventions and is like, nope, I'm not doing what you say, I'm doing what I want. It's like I'm rebelling against every single cause there is and sometimes there's no cause. It's just, I'm rebelling. 
I don't rebel for the sake of it, but it's just like, don't tell me what to do. That is my ethos. Do not tell me what to do, I'll do what I want. If what I want happens to align with what you want me to do, good for you. If it doesn't, well, too bad, suck it, because I'm doing what I want. So I'm a color coordinated rebel. That's because Aries is around. And at the end of the day, I still love my fashion, I still love my style, so I'm gonna call up a word, mate. Um, when we come back after the break, I'm gonna show you how to use color to like, while still maintaining who you are. So, let's go pay some bills. <laughs> and then, uh, I will unleash the chaos <laughs> that Eris unleashed for me. Or unleashed for me this episode to you guys. You're gonna learn something, I'm gonna teach you something, so that should be fun. I'll see you in a bit. And we're back. Um, all right, so color coordinated rebel. I'm just gonna dive right into it. That's what I am today. Um, I'm, like I was mentioning, a very rebellious person. I've always just detested convention. I find routine boring. I find routine. In the episode on Relenting Anarchist, I mentioned that I find routine boring. I don't like doing the same thing over and over again. There was this quote that Rihanna said a while ago that resonated so well with me and that's when I knew that this woman was one of the few people that I was going to admit as an icon to me because I rarely admit that anyone's an icon. I'm the icon. What do you mean? Um, but she said something. She said, I'm always looking for the next best thing. Like while I'm doing something, I'm already bored with it. And that's me in a nutshell. Like while I'm putting an outfit together, I'm already over it. Like I'm over it. Once it's done, I'm over it. In the process of it getting done, I'm over it. I'm thinking about the next thing, I'm the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. So in that way, my mind is like a coffin of ideas over and over and over. And that's just that's my rebellious nature. It's like I don't want to do the same thing twice. So I don't want to do the same thing over and over. And even if I have to do it over and over, I'm gonna have to find a different way to do it so that I don't get bored. Because at the end of the day, you are at the whim, <laughs> at the whim of my boredom. If I if I lose interest in something, we're done. I'm not gonna do it again. So, the way that I keep outfits and clothes interesting for me, as a is just with color. So I remember this last episode. I told you guys, you know, go out, buy something colorful, buy something statement, and you know, just hold on to it. This is how I just make uninteresting things interesting so for example right now the outfit that i'm wearing today is pretty nothing it's a nothing outfit it's a t-shirt this is um stitch from Lilo and stitch one of my favorite disney cartoons yes i watch cartoons if you don't watch cartoons that's too bad find some joy jesus um so this is stitch i love it and then it says love underneath and it's just a plain white shirt i'm wearing um kilted leather pants you're gonna see the I'm wearing kilted leather pants. Now, on its own, this is just a white t-shirt and black pants, right? But to make things exciting, I have added a few statement accessories. Now, this is three necklaces, layers, leather, chain, leather and chain, right? And then I have these rings on my fingers. And on my feet, I have yellow sneakers. You're gonna see the full outfit on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, I don't know what you're doing. You're missing out, really. You should go over there and get your life. Um, but yeah, so the full outfit is going to be on Instagram. Now, the color coordination comes in the tiniest little things. Everybody who knows me, anyone who's been around my style for too long, my sister is one of those people, will tell you how detail obsessed I am. I am. Like, the tiniest little detail matters to me. And I suppose it's what makes my style look effortless, but the thing is, and that's Obi, obviously. That's Obi Angela that you've met. She's the person coordinating the tiniest little details. So, you've seen my accessories, I've explained that to you, however, if you notice, my accessories are coordinated, right? They match, there's no silver and gold in here. And I know, I know, it's pretty cool, so, you know, I've seen people mix and match metals, like one gold, gold and silver and all that, and when it's done right, it's great. I'm not someone to tell you what not to do. I personally don't do it, but I've seen people do it and it's pretty cool. When it's done right sometimes it's just it's not quite doing what it's not quite giving what you think it's giving and as the retired you know, fashion critic that i am i'm just gonna keep it to myself so in 
keeping with things that I do. Not necessarily telling you what to do. Here's what I do. When I'm wearing silver, I'm wearing silver. When I'm wearing gold, I'm wearing gold. I don't mix my metals. I don't miss my metals. Maybe one day I will. So if you notice, like my accessories are coordinated, right? This matches, these are dragons on my fingers. Yeah. And then, you know, there's a, there's a, is this a snake? I don't even know. I bought it because it was cool. I generally don't know what that animal and then there's a sword going through it so it's an animal coiled right it's either a dragon or a snake this is leather chain leather so silver gold black sorry silver silver black it matches the stone in this ring is silver is black as well all coordinated now look at my nails my nails are yellow right there's yellow polka dots all that the whites in the nails match my t-shirt and they match my sleeves my lipstick matches my t-shirt all of these are tiny, tiny, tiny little details that when put together, if you see this ensemble, it's like, okay, I like your outfit. That's what gets you to the, I like your outfit. But it doesn't look like you're trying too hard. The point is, like, everything here is so perfectly coordinated. Tiny little details are what you coordinate, so it doesn't look like you're trying too hard. That's how you get, that's, what, that's how I get my effortless sheet, is coordinating the tiny things, the tiniest little things, making it so cohesive. That even in my rebellious state, I'm still like got together. Because I'm giving you full pump in this outfit. Well, not full pump, I'm not wearing spiked shoes. I do have spiked shoes, yes. I intend to buy more. But I'm not giving you full pump in this outfit, right? But you can still tell, like, this is still very true to who I am. Anyone who knows me who sees this outfit knows, like, yep, that's Noella, that's her. Like, I'm unapologetic about my cartoon watching. I will watch Lilo and Stitch until Disney. Like if a streaming service could scratch, I would watch Lilo as digital Disney scratches because that is excellent cinema, okay? Non-stop, it's great. There is, you know, there's intrigue, there's an alien, there's her punching the lights out of that stupid girl because she said ill to her face. Yes, Vita, she's mad. And there's, there's everything that I love in a show. Lilo and Stitch is the best. I don't care if you think it's a cartoon or something. Yes, maybe you should watch more cartoons. Um, but anyone who knows me knows that this outfit is very me. It's extremely me. So find things in your outfits. When you're putting together outfits, maybe you're not a cartoon person like me. You know, maybe you are not. Your, your aesthetic is more like, you know, chill goddess vibes. But make sure that whatever you do, you have to coordinate, right? So I told you to buy color last episode. Whatever color you want. And while I was talking to you, I don't know if you noticed. The colors that I'm wearing are, what are they? If you remember your lesson from the complementary colors, right? Yellow is at the top of the heel, blue and purple was at the bottom, complementary, right? And then side by side is analogous, right? Actually, technically, these are triadic as well, but that's, that's a completely different ballgame. So yes, these colors work well together because they're complementary. Blue and yellow and purple, these are all complementary. So whatever color you want, check your color wheel, right? And the color that you will coordinate them with are the colors that complement it. So if let's say you bought a flaming orange blazer, I'm, I'm going out on a limb here and hoping that you were that adventurous. Or maybe you just bought orange sandals. Or maybe you just bought, I don't know, bright green, a bright green blazer, something. Now, green goes well with red, however, I don't recommend wearing green and red outside of Christmas because Christmas has such a hold on those colors <laughs> that you will look like a Christmas tree. Christmas is my favorite time of year. So anybody looking like a Christmas tree, I think what is perfectly fine with me. But um, it's not exactly the look you want to go for. So emerald, green, and crimson, maybe not the best. But if you bought like something super green, like a, let's say a deep green, maybe try pairing it with a soft pink. Okay? And it doesn't have to be, you know, pink pants. If you want to do that, you can try that green with pink pants. If you're not that adventurous, then you can do pink nail polish, pink lipstick, right? Or pink shoes, something tiny, something small. But coordinate your colors and make sure that, you know, it puts, it, once you do that, it brings the outfit together so cohesively. Now, when we're talking about details, because, you know, I get, like I said, I'm very detail oriented. Even things down to the clasp on my purse. If I have a purse, any purse that I wear with this outfit is going to have a silver um, zipper. Yes, I am that detail obsessed. 
right? So if you're, if you're going to put a purse on your outfit, let's say you put the outfit together, whatever purse you put on the outfit, look at the zipper. What color is it? Is it going with the jewelry you have on? Is it coordinated with the jewelry? If it is, then the outfit looks a little bit more cozy. Because the thing is, we like when things are coordinated. We like order, human beings. We're a very chaotic species, but we do like order. Right? Because I believe that inside of everybody is a lot of chaos. It's very perfectly few people that are just on the inside like, well, they're Buddhists and I don't think any Buddhists are following me. Um, so it, on your inside, there's a million thoughts going at the same time. You are a very chaotic being, so you like looking at order, things that are ordered. You're looking at silver, 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 and then gold just arrests you and it's like, no, it's not that. I don't like that. At least for me. Remember that everything that I'm talking about is in relation to me. You might like arrested. I'm gonna say different things. <laughs> That's not where that sentence was going, but I said arrested. My brain said development, and yes, arrested development is a great show for watching. Um, but no, you might like being arrested by things like that. I don't, so I tend to keep my things like coordinated. So if you're gonna put a purse on an outfit, um, make sure that the zipper matches the jewelry you're wearing. I know, right? Tiny things like that, it matters. At least it matters if you want your outfit to look cohesive, coordinated. And uh, also, so that's tip number one. That's one of my tips. Uh, make sure your colors are coordinated. So um, I've given you a tip now if what you bought was green or pink. So you can use pink to like offset the green, pink lipstick, pink nail polish, pink purse, uh, pink backpack. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on fire today with all the show references and the cartoons. Um, if what you bought was, let's say, something statement, like an extra blingy purse, man, that goes in anything. <laughs> that goes in everything, girl. Just throw it on, on the outfit and just go out there and blind them. Blind them. Just be like, sorry, did I blind you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you not see? <laughs> if what you bought was maybe a blue, you can pair it off with blue and green go well together, actually. Yeah, because I mean the sky and plants. Uh, try something green if you're if you're a little on the conservative side. Because if you're a little on the conservative side and you're a little scared, uh, try something green so that way you don't flash too much. Uh, but if your blue is like a navy blue, maybe try a, a brighter green. If you're or you could try a darker green. That's fine. It just they might look like the same color. And you're trying to create a little bit of contrast, aren't you? Um, and then if what you bought was orange, orange goes well with everything. I say that's because it's one of my favorite colors. But orange goes well with, it goes with green, it goes with purple. Um, but if it goes with pink, I know I'm, I'm saying these colors and your brain is going too much color. Too much color. I don't want to. So if you want to calm orange all the way down, all the way down. Wear it with something like a deep, deep blue, like a navy, almost like a like almost like a midnight blue. Just rain it in. Just okay, okay. Relax yourself. But also throw in like a deep, not fuchsia, a deep pink, right? A deep pink. So think of a sunset. A sunset. Wear the colors of a sunset. So an orange, a little bit of rose pink, a little bit of a deep pink, and it will look just like best part of the day. That's it for colors. Uh, another thing I said you should try was statement jewelry. I'm doing the same thing here. So these are pretty intense. Well, intense for a lot of people. Regular for me. I wear these things to, I don't know, like grocery shopping. But buy statement jewelry, right? So that on the day, like if you have an outfit, again, that is just a nothing outfit, blue, white t-shirts, blue jeans, you can throw some statement jewelry on it right coordinate it with your accessories and just you know it looks like you are giving it effort your style just looks so sick, so put together um for the dudes that are following me cuban links get the job done cuban links are the most i call them the most understatement understated statement jewelry because you throw on cuban links on anything and it instantly looks like you have somewhere to be right um Whenever I think Cuban links, the first thing I think is, um, what's that video? Uptown Funk. 
right? By Bruno Mars. Right. In that entire video, Bruno is wearing, honestly, upgraded pajamas. But he has Cuban links on and he has like these loafers on and it looks like and he has sunglasses on. I mean sunglasses go without saying. If you sunglasses are the cheapest way to make anything look like you gave it too much thought. Like you like you gave it effort, like you came out here trying to tell the bitches who is in charge. Sunglasses, come on. So invest in your sunglasses, do it. But Bruno was wearing literally PJs, Cuban links sunglasses and just white. He was wearing white loafers. And the outfit was giving, and I was just like, this guy. So, Cuban links for men, that gets the job done. If you're not a jewelry person, man, I don't know what to tell you. Why are you not a jewelry person? I don't know what to tell you, man. Buy some jewelry. Dang. Why? I'm going to pulse for effect. <laughs> if you're not a jewelry person, I'm not in that can't help you. Um, watches, I guess. Buy a, but I don't. I don't like statement watches. They're so like men's watches keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's like are you it's just they're trying to I I think from like I find that they're trying to fit as many diamonds per square inch as humanly possible. And it's like that is ugly. I'm sorry. I don't care if it's an I don't care if it's a Piaget or if it's Audubon Piguet. I don't care. That shit is ugly. Why so many diamonds? I'm fine. I'm fine. I went up on a tangent there. I returned. I'm okay. If you're not a jewelry person, if you're a man, try a signet ring. Something like this. Right? Um, just try one. It gets the job done. If um, I once knew a man that his outfits were honestly just t-shirt, jeans, and high tops. But he had a signet ring that he wore all the time. And once he put that on, it, the outfit just looked like he tried. And I made a mental note of that. I did a mental note to tell all the guys I knew, man, invest in signet rings. It just, there's just something about it. If you notice, um, most class, um, like all the so, like IVs and stuff, you know, when they have class rings, it's a signet ring. Because there's something just, we, it's been ingrained, ingrained into us that signet rings uh, give you this level, not status, but yeah, it's a status symbol. A signet ring is a, is a status symbol. Um, if anybody watched House of Cards, remember Frank? He had this signet ring, and then when he had finished the sentence, he'd just knock on the wood with it, and it just signaled the end of the sentence, and I thought that was so cool until I lost interest in the show. But yeah, try a signet ring if you're not a Cuban links person or like a jewelry person. Try a watch. Watches are good. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be the huge, gaudy, diamonds per square inch watch, but a nice leather strap watch like a nice chronograph watch always great always great um and then i i really advise bracelets i do a nice leather bracelet it instantly instantly makes an outfit look like you tried if you're not again a cuban because again cuban links are the cheat code but if that's not your thing try that and ladies ugh, gift it to the man in your life you can't say no he's a gift <laughs> That way he's very jewelry. <laughs> Just give it to him. Oh my god, baby, please now. And then when you're going out, at least one of you, both of you look like you put effort into the outfit. I'll be walking around with somebody who just looked like you broke out of bed and you are looking 10 levels of fly. We have had enough. <laughs> We're going to get these men to dress up whether they like it or not. I'm pretty sure my boobs are screeching in the background. <laughs> I don't care. We're going to get you put to dress up. What's all this? I'm not looking fly all the time. Huh? Are you my background image? No, you're not. Anyways, so yeah, I have. <laughs> so to recap, <laughs> today I am your color coordinated Rainbow Rebel, right? In case you missed any of that, and I've taught you right now, use color, you know, to amp up your outfit, and then use statement things, use statement jewelry. For the men, Cuban links, signet rings, bracelets, the leather bracelet. For the women, you know, color, man, color is your friend. We're not going to get the dudes to color, so let's just let's just allow that. We're not going to get it. We're not going to get these niggas to wear color. They're not going to wear color. But if if you are an adventurous man, please follow the color tips that I gave as well. If you, I'm listen. I would absolutely love to see a man wearing color because the black and white and the occasional gray is just it's a bummer. Okay, are you guys storm clouds? Come on. 
I was going to say, say stall troopers, but then you will now know how much of a nerd I am, and I still need to maintain that level of cool. So, anyway, I've, I've, I've chatted for a little bit. I hope that you were making notes, and if you aren't making notes, well, you're gonna have to re watch or listen to this just the next time that you're putting your outfit together. Try this on Friday. Friday is coming. Do this with your outfit, guys, on Friday, and just let me know how that works out for you. I'm gonna go pay some bills, and then when we're back, we're gonna segue into the tips and the QA for this session. All right, see you in a bit. All right, and we're back in this roller coaster of an episode. I hope you've had fun. I hope you're enjoying it. So. All right, and uh, we're gonna segue into the unruly tips or takes of the of the podcast. Uh, this time, I'm gonna do a take. I've done way too many tips. I've been way too nice to you. So let me try a take. I'm going to do a take. Here's my unruly take. When it comes to fashion and colors. <laughs> There's nothing. There is nothing. And this is, this is for the people that are probably cringing at my jewelry there is nothing demonic about dragons and snakes stop it stop letting your religion get in the way of your fashion i'm not saying don't be religious be whatever you need to be but stop ascribing way too much meaning to things where there's no meaning dragons don't exist they're not real animals they're not they're not they're fictional things it's like saying there's something demonic about this cartoon character that i'm wearing do not let your closeted thinking impact the way that you express yourself. There's way too much of that going on. And if you're sitting there going, oh my God, all this, there's nothing demonic about the color black. I think the color black is boring. I think it's a lack of color. I think it's just a lack of, but I'm not going to lie. Black instantly makes it look like you tried. I, I know, I know, I don't know what it is. I, I honestly believe that as conditioning. I believe that it's conditioning because all the cool things that you see, like every single time you've seen a red carpet, you know, the men are in like all black tuxedos and it's like, oh my God, he tried. He's wearing a coat and trousers. There is nothing demonic about animals and colors. It's just, it's just a thing that is, okay? Let yourself breathe, let yourself, let yourself breathe. I said it. I said what I said. I'm gonna move on. I'm, I'm going to just whoop, segue right past that. I will not be exposing. That's it. Allow yourself to breathe. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just this red carpet thing that I just thought of pissed me off. Minus my takes. I I need I need men to try harder. Like I need you. There's nothing cute about not trying like there's nothing cute about walking beside because i my biggest my biggest peeve is not even a pet peeve it's a full-grown peeve that has moved out as a house with the landlord and children it is a fully grown peeve seeing women all dressed up and then seeing the men beside them just wearing anything I want to fight. I was just like, forget that you are beside somebody who is giving us everything she was supposed to give us. She's giving us outfits. She's giving us fix. She's giving us hair. She's giving us shoes. She's giving us jewelry. She's giving us back to back to back to kids. Forget that. You are you a cardboard cutout? I don't understand. How, why would you be so comfortable standing beside somebody who is giving, looking like background? Why? I need you to try harder. Like, I need you to actually not be the background image when you go out with people. And this doesn't apply to just men. It's not women do this. It's like, oh, I don't want, you know, I'm not interested in, you know, looking this, that. My sister, if you don't know how to do makeup, just say that. And if you don't know how to dress, just say that. But I'll sit there and be, I'm sorry. You do not enjoy 
having people go, I like your outfit. Really? You don't like it. You like looking like Otimo every single day. Stop lying to yourself. It's a lie. I said it's a lie. It's a lie. Dress up, please. Who are you being Otimo for? For whose benefit? For whose benefit? Put effort into your outfits, please. Haba. I don't, I don't get it. The being boring is not a personality trait. Do something with your life. Give us something to look at. Be the beauty you want to see in the world. All right. That's it. I'm going to segue. <laughs> I'm going to take a minute from bullying. You know, I'm just a little bit because I just remember the red carpet thing. And it's not just red carpet. Weddings, everything. You go to like events and the men are just looking like, like they can easily go from there to an abata joint. Why? Nigerian in me just made a full appearance. We're going to segue. I'm just gonna take a beat, find tune up my question, and then we're going to segue into the question, the fashion question of the episode. After which, we're going to wrap this up. I'm gonna yell at you a little bit more to give some effort into your outfits, and then we're gonna. I'm going to leave you to enjoy your Wednesday, and then you know, yeah. All right. So today's question is actually an interesting one. Um, you know, someone heard me say on the episode, the Unrelenting Anarchist one, I said that I would never leave the house, you know, without six inch heels on. And that question, it was in the form of a, um, a voice note and then I transcribed it. Unfortunately, this person's not on Instagram, but it's a very close friend of mine. And she said, the one thing I have not been able to do properly is walk in heels. Like, I can't imagine walking in six inch heels. How did you do it? Like, is it a skill you had to learn? Or was it something, or is it something you're just born knowing how to do? It's a skill you have to learn, just like everything. Six inch heels, your foot is at an angle. Of course you had to learn. The first time I wore heels, I fell. Of course I fell. Twisted my ankle too. And then I said, in the spirit of the rebel that I am, I said, me be conquered by shoes not in your life not on your life i would not so the trick to wearing heels is starting small okay if you've never worn heels before do not go and perch on six inch heels immediately you will fall you will break your legs no seriously i mean it the bone will snap i've broken a bone before it is the most painful thing ever well one of two things are still up there menstrual cramps are so um yeah Heels start small. So start with a comfortable two inch, right? Start with a comfortable two inch and then your foot gets used to being on tiptoe. Practice your tiptoes, right? The trick to walking on heels is, is walking on tiptoe. So you know how you walk when you're on your tiptoe? It's, you know, you have to place the foot, right? But with heels, it's the opposite. Place the heel, then the toe. So it's heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. I don't know how to explain this without standing up, but if you start with a small heel, your foot is at an angle, right? This is the heel, this is your foot. When you're walking, place the heel down first, then your toe. Heel down, then your toe. Heel down, then your toe. Slowly. When you get comfortable, and that's why walking is like this, it's like a top, top thing. Can you see what I'm doing? <laughs> this one requires you to watch the YouTube video if you're just listening. So, heel, toe, heel, toe. If when you start with your comfortable two inch heel, like small kitten heels. And then, and the funny thing about this is that you start small with heels and as, as you go, as you go, you know, as you get older, you actually revert back to the smaller heels. Like I've since, you know, traded in my six inch heels, God bless them. We did good to four inch heels. Like I'm capped out at four now and I'm sure at some point I will, I don't think I'm ever going to go lower than three now. No, I'm just, I'm just that much of a rebel. So start at two inches, um, ratchet it up to three inches. When you get comfortable with three inches, go to four and so on and so on and so on. I think the highest, and then when you get to, excuse me, when you get past the three inch mark, start with platforms. Oh, I should have shown you, you know what platform shoes are? The ones that I talked about in uh, one of the episodes where it's like, it's a chunk in front 
and then the heel there, right? So if you wear a four inch heel with a two inch platform, you're technically wearing two inch heels because you have the cushioning, right? Now, if you want to be that, and remember, as you're starting with your heels, start with chunky heels and then graduate to stilettos. When you become a master, a guru, like some of us, you can wear the Christian Louboutin figures, you know? You can wear the Kates. Those are six inch heels with absolutely zero platform, six inch stiletto heels. When you become a guru, once you get used to walking in those, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. But again, the trick, the answer to the question, the trick is start small. Start small, start chunky. And then as you go higher, you get thinner, you go higher, you get thinner. And then one day you will arrive at Kate's. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will be the pinnacle of your success. All right, that's it. Uh, we've come to the end of this episode. I hope that you learned something. Let me just do a recap of all we did. Color. So the color that you bought, the statement item that you bought from the last episode, use it to amp up your outfit. So when you color coordinate, um, remember to match your medals, right? Remember to match your colors. So like I said, my outfit today, I'm wearing, I have yellow nails and these nails are so cute. My yellow nails match the blue on my t-shirt and then I have like yellow sneakers on and they match my nails. So everything is like perfectly coordinated because blue and yellow are like complementary colors. And then my metals are matched. I have silver rings on which match my silver uh, chain necklace and my leather matches my signet ring. The stone on my other ring is black as well. So that is all coordinated. My lipstick matches my t-shirt. Perfect color coordination always makes an outfit look like you tried. I'm wearing kilted leather pants, so it pulls everything together because leather goes with chains. We all know that. Um, then for, you know, for statement items, like let's say you bought like a super, I, 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 taught, you, I taught you how to like, you know, coordinate your colors and your statement pieces. If you bought like a super statement blazer, let's say you bought like a flaming orange blazer and now you don't know what to wear it with, start small, you can start with black. Or if you want to give it a little bit of oomph, just wear it with orange, wear it with you know pink, a dusty rose, right? So think of a sunset, the colors in a sunset, and use that to offset orange, to calm orange down, right? Or you can use a deep blue, a deep navy blue. Um, use jewelry as well. So statement jewelry is good. Um, like I said, this is three stats necklaces. This the outfit I'm wearing today is a nothing outfit. It's a t-shirt and black pants. But once I accessorized, coordinated the colors, it looks like I gave it a bit of effort. That's the easy way to make your outfits look like you tried, especially for days where, um, you don't have the energy, but you don't want to look like a bum. Statements, jewelry, and colors. Um, I, I taught you, you know, for the men, I said tricks, you know, to make your outfit look like you have it, a little bit of pizzazz going for it. A signet ring is good. Cuban links are good. A chain bracelet. Please try not to go for the huge, huge, gaudy ass watches. I mean, unless that's your thing, but Jesus, really? Um, statement, you know, timeless pieces, a good chronograph is always a good investment. And then uh, for heels, you know, for the person who asked me how to walk in heels, in a nutshell, start small and work your way up. Last but not least, we had my own Ruby take. There is nothing demonic about a color or an animal. There, I said it. That brings us to the last, to the conclusion of this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and uh, you know you can find us wherever. Follow the podcast at on Ruby Fashion Pod on Instagram to see today's outfit. Follow me, my personal Instagram at Danuela E. Um, follow at the Podpire Network on Instagram as well. You can find this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Google and podcasts. Wow. See, every once in a while, you go get me shows up. I know what standard. <laughs> you can find the podcast on Google, Apple, you know, iHeartRadio and all that jazz. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming along on this wild, wild journey. I'll see you next Wednesday. Cheers. <laughs>